Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com with this week's episode of the Market Monday. I apologize in advance for not having any sort of uh, fancy images and graphs and things like that. I had it planned and then I just ran out of time. We've been working on uh, uh, starting up our Patreon because so many people have asked how that you can support the channel and how you can still offer me an independent voice without the... Uh, basically being held hostage by future or potential sponsors. So I think that a lot of you appreciate that I'm an independent voice and can speak my mind. And I think if Patreon is a good way to make sure that happens. I do promise that once that up, I'll give you a link in the description. If you want to leave me a tip, that's the best way to do so uh, through Patreon. So basically, uh, you see a site in front of you right now. It's called MTG Stocks. It's one of the go-to websites that I check quite frequently. Uh, one in my arsenal. Um, and I think it's going to be my go-to one from now here on out, unless I can find a different outlet. Uh, I'm not going to go over the history of why we made the change. If you want to know that reason, go back to the last market episode. Uh, before I get started, I do want to talk about MTGO because it's a huge, huge, huge topic. But it's all explained in two videos I'll link in the description. One, I sat down with Zach uh, and we went over why the MTGO treasures were insulting to a local game store owner like ourselves because we're expected to hold ourselves at a higher standard than Wizard expects themselves with like price support and evaluation of, of tournament winnings, prizes. Um, and then the second one is pretty in-depth. I had a whole podcast with MC Headquarters where we discussed treasures. So I'm not going to you know beat the dead horse with MC Joe Treasures, but I am going to offer a little bit of statistics. Um, so according to MTGO traders and goat bots and a few other, the market has fallen on MTGO about 20% over one day. So basically all the modern staples completely crashed in one day after the treasures announcement as people sold out of, uh, their MTGO collections. Now I'm not a hundred percent at that point. First of all, I discuss in some of the videos that I have no choice. Uh, MTGO is a program that I have been using since its inception. I still think it's more good than it is bad. And that's where a lot of people disagree with me. Like, why well, you're probably the problem, Kevin. You keep throwing money at them. I still have an enjoyable experience with MT Joe. It's just, I, as an, I, I talk about personality theory a ton on this channel. And one of the things that is just kind of the, the Achilles heel to my personality type, the ENFP, is we, we tend to want to see potential in things and people, and we, we really hold everything to the same standard we hold ourselves. So uh, it's very hard for relationship partners, for one, for, to, be, to be involved with the ENFP, because we, we expect growth, personal growth, we expect accountability, we expect them to always strive to be better, always look for perfection. And that's usually how most ENFPs hold their own standards or hold self-image. And so a lot of people aren't able to handle the self uh, beating themselves up like most ENFPs are. Uh, but it's, it's not very like if you're ever around it, a person with my personality type, I wouldn't take it as insulting rather than as like, it's just our way of really trying to push, really trying to make something better. Uh, when we maybe nag or, or I wouldn't say lash out. That's not the right word. Cause I don't think I've really lashed out. At MTGO, I've been annoyed. I've had uh, very, very huge grievances with how they've run their community and how they've run their software. But the whole reason I do it, and I can even say the same thing for like Puka Trade in the past videos, is I want things to become better. If I don't like a service, if I don't like a game, if I don't like whatever it is, I will be silent on it. I will move on. I will completely uh, erase it out of my life. If, if you want, if you want to hear me like groaning about something, it's because I enjoy it. It's because I want it to be good. It's because it's a big part of, of just my experience. And I think I'd put MGG under that category. I want the software to live up to potential. I see so much potential in that software. I see an amazing experience that I can interact with the fans. I've, I've called for like so many just software changes to make it easier for me to, uh, t film gameplay. I still would love if there was a way to host your own tournaments and host your own prize support and like uh, be able to see both people's hands and both people's battlefields without having to do some other uh, you know third party software like both people being logged on and then screen capture their their things and then you know flip the screens yada 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 uh, I think that was uh, that every other game like Dota 2 for example has abilities for spectators to basically cast like uh, 
uh, comment comment on the game and have access to all of, uh, both sides' vision. And I think that MT Joe should be the same way on like private function games. And it's just they really haven't done many changes for just gameplay forever. But the thing, this is Market Monday. It's not MT Joe criticized day, so it really is criticizing the 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 market. And I think that to just go over the full ins and out of that, you're, it's just best to go check out the videos that I'll have in the link in the description below. But just just since that video has been released, since since the weekend the dust has settled, MT Joe modern prices are down about 20%. And that is a bad sign as once again people sell out and just leave the, the program. And we need a lot of people in the program. We had They had to get rid of eight-man queues because they weren't firing. Uh, the more people in the program equals more opportunities, more things they can do. Uh, people always talk about, hey, I want to try some other formats. Well, I'm sure Wizards would do a ton more formats if they could actually get those events to actually uh, happen, but they need a, a minimum of like 16 players. And if you can't get 16 players for a vintage or whatever, or a a, a singleton, then they're not going to do the the format. I'd love to try out some of these other formats. So I am not happy that there's this big exodus from MT Joe. I want it to become better. I want it to to reach its potential. But that said, again, I go in full detail about what the treasures are uh, in another video. So I'm not going to cover for Market Monday. What I do want to talk about is continuing off of my last video about, uh, well, not last, 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 last videos, but just just overwhelming theme that I've had for Market Monday for quite a while now, which is the fetch lands and just the state of modern. And now I've done some research on modern as a whole, and I've given my reasonings last time about how I was disappointed about the ban list. There's nothing banned or unbanned, and there is no upcoming Pro Tour changes. Uh, the Grand Prix don't seem to have a lot of focus. Like Modern Masters 2 is going to come out in an awkward month of just like March, and nothing is like supported around it, which is very, very peculiar to me because of the last two biggest tournaments ever in, in Magic the Gathering history have revolved around the release of Modern Masters. And it just, I, I just do not know what's going on. I mean, who makes the decisions at Wizards? It just really seems like they don't know what they're doing. They make good decisions. Then why would you why would you ever not want to do your the, the release on a summer set like in the summer in Vegas the release of a big a hyped up set has just done wonders for the formats brought people in and it's just a huge misstep as well as not having a pro tour for modern uh, I discussed that as well with MTG headquarters in the link in the description below so basically it just shows me that the the Wizards just really doesn't want to focus on modern which I think is a very bad idea I know this is a little bit of anecdotal evidence, like a, a combination of me just gathering a lot of anecdotal evidences, but it seems to be that around most game stores I've talked to in most scenes, of course there are exceptions, that Modern is down at this time of year when it should be way up. Like one thing I've noticed is local game store, every time there's a rotation, you get more people into Modern because they've just had it with having to buy into new standard cards. Um, so I, I explained this that not everyone can be a Kevin or at my store, I am the 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 go-to. Like I'm the best player at my store. I have the most experience. I have, I, I think I'm just at a different competitive level than most players. And so when we get uh, new players, they automatically want to become where I've, what I've been able to achieve. And so at first they start to think, oh, it's cards that are keeping me back. I'm a new player. I don't have the the access to cards that Kevin has. So they buy out. They go all in on standard. And they, they, they copy the, 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 the top net decks and they copy all these other things and they still lose. And I think that lasts about two, two rotations when they get frustrated and then just quit the standard scene. Or maybe they actually become pretty decent at standard, but it's not all that they hoped, you know, they, they, it's not like that one time purchase and then you can feel uh, assured that you never have to buy that couch again, you know, type thing of going back to like Fight Club. You'll never have to buy that dinner set ever again. With Magic, once you're done with your standard deck, you, it rotates and you have to buy another standard deck. So just for some peace of mind, you get a lot of people that automatically gravitate towards modern. And usually at this time of, of, of the year, you get a lot of people just completely selling off of their old rotated standard deck and buying into modern staples. And the prices of modern staples go up. However, it didn't happen at my store this time. It didn't happen at other stores that I talked to. It doesn't seem that Magic is able to convert uh, all these people over to eternal formats that they used to, and that is very, 
very concerning for the health and longevity of the game. Modern is necessary. Whether you like it or not, I tend to be in the, the uh, group that doesn't like modern at the moment. I think it needs to be shaken up quite a bit, even though every I hear around the grapevine, it seems to be like in two different categories. Either modern is terrible right now, or modern so diverse, there's 20 decks you can play. Well, 20 decks you can play doesn't really necessarily mean healthy. It just mean, Diverse does not mean healthy. In my opinion, it's it's if we still have things that are violating the 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 overall uh, goals for modern, I don't think that's necessarily help. If there was like a if there was like forty different viable eggs type decks, like combo based decks, I wouldn't call that a healthy format where people are just flipping coins and waiting twenty minutes for a person to take a turn. That's why they banned eggs. It was just so high variance and so long to actually go through the process. It wasn't something that was necessarily. Uh, destroying the meta, it was it was just something that was annoying to play against. And I think that they should continue to go down that road and explore things that they should have clear-cut goals for modern. So that's one of the reasons I would assume that modern is falling off in popularity, even though we have all the cheerleaders trying to say that, no, it's the best thing ever. Um, so I'm just going to try to back up my evidence here of, of, okay, we've seen they haven't been able to convert people over to modern. Uh, we have more people most likely leaving the modern format than coming into the modern format, which should cause one very clear thing. In supply and demand, that will mean prices will be going down. Now, a lot of people have argued it's the fetch lands fault. Well, let me give you some numbers and we'll check it out here with MG Stocks. I don't know if I explained this, this site before I started rambling. MG Stocks is just a nice little go-to. One of the very things I, I love about uh, MG Stocks is both the interests which pull up like cards that have been just hitting the radar. Now I'm doing this and won't pull pull up anything. Uh oh. Womp womp. Try to give you a stand a uh, shout out and now the internet is clearly not working. Let's see if we can get. Oh, there we go. So we get the the interest here. It will show like the biggest price changes, like the Smuggler's Copter, which was like a four of in every deck in the Star City Open. I think the first week Star City Open has been absolutely little. Uh, Humans was the huge breakout deck in the last one going around, and then Humans was like obsolete after like week two. Uh, so uh, you can just kind of see a bunch of these these cards that have, have had hits and gone up in percentage wise. Another good thing I love is the analytics, and one of my very, very favorite price tools is this all-time high or low, because it kind of shows you, should you sell, should you uh, hold on stuff. Now, oh yeah, a healthy format usually, when you see MTG uh, stocks, this list will be huge, and this list will be small. That would be a, a, a bullish market, or, or, or making meaning that prices are, are, are going up, whereas... It looks like it's pretty even, and it actually looks like the majority cards are going down. You do see a lot of Eternal Masters and um, Conspiracy, Kaladesh, and Rotated sets. So actually, that's not too troublesome, because it, this time of the year, all those are going to be at their lowest because they've just rotated. But anywho, I think Gideon at $17 is a little bit concerning, though. So anywho, um, by the way, Gideon was the second most played card at Star City Open uh, next to Smuggler's Copter. So just some food for thought there uh, with, with how powerful Gideon still is in the format. And if you think Chandra is going to be able to hold a price tag that didn't see much play and Gideon went down, is cleared down to 18 bucks, yeah. Anyway, so those are some of the things I really, really like from MC Stocks. But it also does have a very good... Um, price graphs and things like that and we'll check out some of these these cards that I'm going to list hopefully I can get back on topic here so a lot of people are saying fetch lands are the big barrier to modern but fetch lands have, have predominantly stayed flat with one exception verdant catacombs has gone up gone up from 65 to 75 dollars which is so that's just a price um other way around so we go it's gone up what, like fifteen percent? If I'm doing that, that correctly? No, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's gone up ten dollars um, from its sixty-five dollar price to to seventy-five. So it's just like a fifteen percent increase. Nothing too significant compared to the rest of the the fetch lines that have predominantly stayed flat. Verdant Catacombs is just really popular because it's needed in a lot more decks. Death Shadow uses it. Jund uses it. Uh, a lot of the Abzan companies use it, and it's the go-to card for a lot of cards to get the basic land they need to save themselves from Blood Moon. So Verdant Catacombs has been a very, very, very popular uh, card in Modern 
for a long time just because that's one of the most popular, if not the most popular, color combination. But Scalding Tarn, which is the most popular in Legacy and still has a very good uh, popularity in uh, Modern, has actually stayed flat. And the rest of the fetch lands, Marsh Flats, uh, which goes in the same Abzan decks that we mentioned, and uh, of course all the constant Tarkir ones that have continued to go down, I looked at them today and they were still down about 25 cents per week, um, have been easier for people to go into Modern, not harder to get into Modern because of that flatness. So let's just look at some of the top decks. So I have the prices here, we'll check some of the graphs here. The most uh, played deck right now, according to top eight finishes, on either the uh, competitive paper circuit or the competitive MT Joe is Affinity. Affinity for the last past year has been the most reliable deck. It's it has the biggest share of the metagame, the most of them pinging on those top eight finishes or any other finishes that that uh, are recorded. I would say that the the cards that are most iconic of Affinity and also the most expensive in this one would be Arcban Ravager, Mox Opal, Ink Moth Nexus, Steel Overseer, and Glimmer Void. Those are kind of your go-to shell cards that if Affinity is popular, those cards should be going up in value. Uh, we find the exact opposite. Arcbound Ravager has gone from $55 to $40. Mox Opal has gone from $45 to $38. Ink Moth Nexus, who actually has plays double duty, with um, the uh, the infect, and it also plays double duty. It, you see it every now and again in some of these like uh, eight rack. It's not really eight rack because instead of the racks, you use Ink Moth Nexus and Infect with this card. So you try to try to take down their hand and then just kill them pretty quick with Ink Moth Nexus. So you see those in some of those fringe decks, and then you even see it sometimes in these 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 re revive of Kessig Wolf run that I've seen it's just either uh um escape shift and then some of them actually do even go like the Sync Moth Nexus route as just another alternate win con that the uh Ink Moth Nexus can be pumped up a lot like the old school one. Uh then we have the so that's gone from forty five to twenty seven. Steel Overseer, which is in half of the decks, is went went from twenty to twelve and Glimmer Void has, has gone down from 46 to 28, which the most of these were spiked. Uh, the highest prices were right after the Modern Pro Tour, the last Modern Pro Tour, which then shortly after the Wizards of the Coast announced they won't be supporting the format in Pro Tours ever again. So I think that was the biggest price crash. This happens every year, though, is they have, there's a lot of hype right before a Pro Tour, so all the Modern prices go way up because all the teams pick up pieces to every one of the decks just so they can run these these gauntlets. And so you have to pick up like multiple decks to to test and test and test. And then you'll see the prices go down a bit when those cards go back into the market. However, it usually has a better recovery and especially at this point, it starts to really recover and rebound. Uh, so I did the math on that. It's about a 30, 30 to 35% decrease in the overall value of Affinity. The second most played deck being Naya Burn. Goblin Guide has gone down from 44 to 36. Eidolon of the Great Rebels has gone down from 12 to 7.5. And most of the cards actually deny burn. Those are the only two expensive cards before you get into fetch lands. It's actually very, if they do reprint the fetch lands, that's deny burn is going to be the most uh, inexpensive deck to pick up from modern. So now we're going to actually look at like common. So maybe mythics, mythics and rares, expensive rares having a hard time to hold value. Maybe that's just the anomaly here. What about commons and uncommons? Rift Bolt's gone down from three dollars to two to under two point five. Lava Spike's gone down from four point five to three point five. Boros Char Charm has also gone down fifty to sixty cents from uh, three dollars to two point four. And the rest of the the even Searing Blaze has gone down from its previous spike uh, when it started seeing more play in some of these eight whack decks and some other things. So there's Night Burn. It has gone down pretty significant as well. So, let's look at Jund, the most stable of stable tier 1 decks since the inception of Modern. Liliana, Kitchen Feeks, and Dark Confidant have stayed pretty much stable. If you have Liliana's, I suggest you get rid of them. I think they're going to be the chase card that's coming out in March of, of the Modern Masters 3, which has a focus on Innistrad. The, so Dark Confidant, I can, stay, can say, staying flat is actually bad. Because a lot of people picked up Dark Confidence thinking it would recover after its Modern Masters printing. Some of the other cards, like uh, the Spell Sky and Noble Hierarch, started to recover after that. Of course, Dark Confidence just got. And Dark Confidence staying flat 
if you actually check out the version before that the two versions that the Modern Masters 1 and Ravnica it actually went down quite a bit since the February because it needed to hit the price of the low one from Modern Masters 2 so I mean it was like 50 bucks before Dark Confidence reprinted now it's way lower than that down the 40 and 35 dollar range and Liliana has stayed 100 percent flat and so is Kitchen Finks. So some of those decks, a lot of those, some of those cards actually have a little more, they go in other decks as well, which can add, add to the pressure of those cards, especially like Liliana. It actually is in quite a few different uh, type of, of shells in, in Modern. Let's look at the, the, gold, the gold standard of, of Modern, which is Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoyf has gone down from 165 to 135, but isn't the full story with Tarmogoyf. I just checked eBay. You can find eBay Buy It Now is for 118 right now for Tarmogoyfs. So people are flooding the market with Tarmogoyfs. Um, it, it also is poised to have a reprint. I don't think it will in Modern Masters 3. I think that Wizards is crazy. They need to give some time to cool off with Goyf because they have plenty of value they can put in Modern Masters 3. Thoughtseize has gone down from 18 to 13.5. Abrupt Decay has also gone down from 13 to 9.5, and those two are very significant because Theros and Return of Neravnica should start to be recovering by now. They shouldn't still be crashing. This is usually the 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 opportune time for like the new players that just got out of standard and are rotating into modern need to pick up Thoughtseize and Abrupt Decays. Well, where is that demand? There isn't any. There isn't any. A lot of people aren't transitioning over, so that's another terrible side with Thoughtseize Abrupt Decay. And last but not least, Black Cleave Cliffs, which is a non-fetch land that goes in a ton of decks besides Jund. It goes in the... Um, Black Cleave Cliffs will go into Mardu Burn or, or, or Jund Burn, and it will also go into Living End. Uh, because the black getting the black red on first turn is very, very significant for Jund. It's either a Thoughtseize or a Lightning Bolt, and so that's their, their go-to uh, fast land that they run is Black Cleave Cliffs. So it spiked out at 25 and is down to 19. The one exception modern is anything that goes in either Infect or Bant. Infect has pretty much stayed flat. Bant Eldrazi has all gone up, especially Noble Hierarch. Noble Hierarch is the one card out of modern that's had significant, significant growth since its Modern Masters 2 reprint. And so that overall, just the majority of the decks that I've looked at, the same holds true for some of the other top uh, played decks, uh, I picked these ones, Affinity, Burn, and Jun, because they've been staple beyond... They, they're, they're, they're basically 1, 2, and 4 right now, the most played decks, uh, or 1, 2, and 5. Uh, burn, Affinity, Burn, and then it's like Infect, Eldrazi, then Jun. But the Burn and Affinity and Jun have been staples since the beginning of Modern, the inception of Modern. It's a very safe deck to invest in and know that you're going to have a Tier 1 deck to play uh, from now on out and have to make very, very few changes. So all in all, it's just a bad, a bad, bad idea for Modern. So let's just go and, and take a look at some of these cards I've talked about and show you some of the graphs here from MGD Stocks. Here's a Goblin Guide promo. It spiked. Everything you can see it spikes around this like February 1st. It was 80-ish bucks here, and it's down to 54. Uh, let's just not look at the promo. Is there another version of this? Okay, I'm still trying to figure out. Uh, da, 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 other sets here. Zendikar. Okay, $36.09. Yep, that's what I have here with the Goblin Guide from its peak, which was right after the Pro Tour. So right after the Pro Tour, it peaked right before, and after the Pro Tour, it started to go down, and it's gone down uh, six bucks since since and it's continued to go down. Uh, one thing that still has a live TCG players, it seems to be there's quite a few prices that are underneath that thirty-six dollars. A lot of those are heavy played and moderate played, so those are ir ir irrelevant to the argument. But uh, eBay, I'm sure if you go look on this, you'll find it from underneath this sort of sort of price tag now you might say you see this all the time these these mountains and valleys uh price spike and price decrease price break and decrease this one though look how long this has lasted it's a lot longer than these other ones and this reigns true not not just for goblin guide but for everything i i think that this is a bad bad sign for modern i think that they need to reevaluate their goals in modern and reevaluate whether they should actually support it at a pro tour i think that the majority of people want to see it at a pro tour. There was some very vocal pros like Owen Turtonwald that was like, I hate it. I hate playing in fact, it's the best deck. It's a stupid deck. I'll play it though because I'll play the best deck because I want to win. Blah, blah, blah. 
Um, they, I think they, they kind of jumped the gun on the Eldrazi. They, they should just ban the damn thing and then let the, the, the dust settle. And you can see that the metagame since Eldrazi has been self-regulating. We had a, we had a, a, a couple months of Death Shadow just really uh, being the top dog, and that's kind of just completely gone off the, the charts now uh, due to Infect is just more consistent and decks like Burn and even Nahiri Jeskai just can just eat up uh, the, the Death Shadows deck. Like, they, it is not... Path to Exile is not kind to that deck. So I think that now with the like burn showing up, we might start and burn and affinity and Jun and stuff, we might start seeing the decks that are actually good versus Abzan and Jun. Uh, things like Zoo that have more of a go wide strategy or every, they have to one path to exile is not enough. They have to continue to remove things and figure out ways around it. So I think that that's pretty much what I'm going to talk about for this this market Monday. Um, the state of modern. I'm I, I'm definitely interested in your comments in the comment section below. Just try to keep it off anecdotal evidences. I, I'm kind of up to here in all the people telling me how wonderful the modern is at their local scene and what like that. If it was so wonderful, price price changes or price um, information would follow that that trend, and it, it's just not it's not doing it. Uh, it'll be interesting within the coming weeks also to see what the treasures has to do with the. Uh, MTGO uh, market. I've heard some conspiracy theories that this is on purpose just to piss everyone off so we'll, we'll all be ready for Magic next, but that seems like the worst brand manage management ever. You never want to have a, f a flop in your own company so that you can pump up something else. That just doesn't make sense what's whatsoever. So, yeah, it's, 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 I really hope that they can get their act together. It is. It, it seems to me like this is another pivotal point in Magic. We've had some of these in the past, and Wizards has found ways around them. There was a huge, huge, after like Time Spiral block, a huge exodus of Magic players, and they had to get, same thing with Kamigawa block, and they had to get creative, and almost every time that they've had these big uh, transitionary periods where they either make or break, Wizards has actually done the right thing and excelled. So I, I'm hoping they can do the same here. Uh, but um, competitors are not out of the, the the reach of actually competing with the game. I mean, the game's been going on for a long time, but I'm sure that they they underestimated Hearthstone. They did never even thought of it as a competitor, and Hearthstone has just con con continued to wipe the floor with MT Joe. Thankfully, Hearthstone's been receiving a lot of uh, backlash because it's been become more of a like a random number generator type, a very very high variance type uh, system, and not just as in depth as Magic. We've seen a lot of exodus and people trying to find an alternative. I think that Magic is prime position, especially MT Joe, to kind of bank on that, to bank on the success and kind of the the rise and fall of Hearthstone. Even though I don't think Hearthstone's going anywhere, it's just going to turn more of a casual type 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 thing. And for them, maybe that's just good. Um, but there's 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 many things. They talk about a lot of the issues again in the MG headquarters podcast and in my other videos. Uh, let me know what you want the the next market Monday to really talk about. You know, usually I just pick a topic. I think this one was the most important. I just want to back up some of my reasonings that I've said before in my my past videos of why I think that we're in a, a dangerous da dangerous spot with investing in modern staples or fetch lands, especially when we have a ton of people talking about that the whole problem with modern is the Zendikar fetch lands. I disagree. The whole problem with modern is how stale it is. And what, how, how Wizards just needs to have a vision, a clear vision, and cr clear guidelines and rules of how they want the format to be run. And then they need to ap absolutely represent it in a pro tour. Or maybe just like a modern championship. Maybe they shouldn't even call it a pro tour. Maybe it should just be on its own different circuit. Maybe that's how they should do pro tours. Like you can qualify for certain standard pro tours and be on a standard pro tour circuit. And have it be independent of a modern pro tours uh, thing. I think that they should still continue to try to explore some of these other formats like Frontier that's come out of Japan, which makes sense to me because it's just the, the lack of Japanese cards before uh, Constantar Kier compared to how many, like the, the scene of, of, of Japanese stores and players that have just popped up in the past few years. It's a really, really good sign that it's, it, it's taking off in some of these other uh, non European, non United States uh, countries. So. Anywho, long-witted rant, or I guess it's a rant, just uh, talk about modern. We're approaching 30 minutes. I hope you enjoyed this video, and again, I'm, I'm looking forward to your suggestions on what I can talk about in the future episodes for the Rogue Market. If you enjoyed this show, uh, highly uh, 
ask for you to go check out the Patreon when we get that up. I'm not much of a money grabber. I've just been a lot of people have told me, wow, Kevin, I think you could do a lot more if you actually had some funding and some backing. And I, you know, I'll, I'll give it a shot and see where this can take me. And it does allow me to be independent and speak independently and not have to worry about people, uh, taking away sponsorships and, and, you know, that stream of, of revenue that actually does keep this, the, the, the show alive. Uh, so if you do like this, if you do feel like I, I do, you know, help you manage your collections or even make you a buck or two, there's a way to give back. Anyway, this has been Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.